Louisiana Beer Review St. Arnold Pumpkinator 2021 aged in bourbon barrels with vanilla. This is a special vanilla edition and it's the first video review for this product in the world. Couldn't find it on the website. I'd like to give you information. I'll give you what I can. 12.6% alcohol brewed in Houston, Texas. Um, it says on the back of the bottle, after letting our Great American Beer Festival gold medal winning Imperial Pumpkin Stout rest in bourbon barrels for over a year, we laced it with Madagascar vanilla for, ec for an extra layer of sweet and inviting flavor. The result is a lavish ale with mellowed spices, complex malt character, and balanced bourbon barrel notes. Enjoy now at 51 degrees or warmer or age cold, or age cold. Imperial pumpkin stout brewed with pumpkin, so that's your vegetable, pumpkin, spices, aged in bourbon barrels with vanilla, so complex. Uh, I have been using pumpkin in oatmeal. I looked up something on the internet and it was saying, yeah, you could put pumpkin in oatmeal. So I had somebody gave me two cans of pumpkin. I wasn't gonna make pumpkin pie. Nice smoke. Uh, and I added cinnamon, some salt and sugar and put it in the oatmeal. It's been working out pretty well. And I've been putting whipped cream on the top. All right, nice smoke. Now I bought this at Matherns and it was $7.49 for one bottle. Now, That's a lot of money. But I can't say too much because I paid, what, $32.99 for the four pack of um, Bell's Expedition Style 35th Anniversary 12 ounce bottles and I paid $35.99 for the four pack of uh, Dogfish Shed 120 IPA. But those were one time things. Well, I guess this is a one time thing since 2021 only came by once and they're going to do something different next this year next season a uh, thin soapy head like soap bubbles very dark brown but it's not black the lighting is better today than a lot of times not black dark brown let's go with the aroma here so first time they got a lot of it left over there i guess people see their price 7.49 nearly $30 a four pack Ooh. ain't really working for too many people but I couldn't resist <sighs> bourbon barrel what kind of bourbon I don't know bellows Jim Beam bullet Buffalo Trace George uh, George Dickel's Tennessee whiskey. They wouldn't list it as a bourbon, even though it is a bourbon, but they list it as Tennessee whiskey. I really don't know. Heaven Hill. Elijah Craig. Evan Williams. Zachariah Harris. I don't know. I don't know. And there's some vanilla, yeah, and spices. And what about pumpkin? Well, pumpkin's sort of a neutral flavor and aroma, in it, which is why people spice it up and sugar it up, because on its own, it wouldn't really be too appealing to too many people, including me. Taste, cheers. It's like Merlotons. People make stuffed Merloton here. What they call it in French, Chabot. But it, it's like the same thing. You gotta add all kinds of spices and mead and bell pepper and everything, or it would taste, or shrimp, or it tastes like stuffed nothing. Pumpkin spice, vegetable as a uh, product, dark roasted barley malt, bourbon barrel, assorted spices. Is it boozy? Oftentimes, Michael Komarov asked a question. I think it's a pertinent question, and um, it is at twelve. It is rather. 12.6 golly gee <laughs> but I reviewed that four loco sour melon earlier this week 
was it last week? See, I can't even remember. It was so strong. Uh, but um, must have been. Yeah, it was a week. It was wasn't this week. It was last week. But that thing, fourteen percent, twenty three and a half ounces. Well, let me tell you right now, it took me hours to drink drink that down. Don't think I just went through it. Oh no 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 no. Took some sips and went through it later in the day. So it didn't really knock me down too much. But um, still, you just you drink something at above twelve. And you start feeling like somebody gave you medicine. I was trying to see if I pick up any chalky mouthfeel. You get a little of that. You, once you get above 10, I don't know what it is about beer, but it's hard a lot of times to hide the chalky. It's like a chalky mouthfeel. It's hard to describe unless you've tried them. The lagers do a worse job of hiding it, especially things that aren't flavored like a her earthquake high gravity. But I think that's pretty low quality anyway. Um, it's made by the Fusion Projects people that uh, also own Four Loco and um, was made for them. But um, it may not be that they're using bad quality ingredients. It just may be that it has no flavoring and that there's no way to hide that at 10%. And don't even ask me about the 12% that I found years ago. Ooh, no, 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 no. So our beer is supposed to be that high. They're not really, you know, they're really supposed to be four and a half, five, six at the most. But, um, you know, now we live in this exotic craziness world. I saw there has a, there's a Hollandia. Now, I've seen Hollandia. I bought Hollandia. That's made by Shrinkle, Shrinkle family distillery, an actual family distillery, and um, I mean brewery <laughs> in the Netherlands. And um, I was in Florida City, Florida years ago, and I found Hollandia. I was like, I've heard of this. It's like a rival of Heineken, an inferior rival. But I had to say it wasn't too bad. It was like, hmm, I would drink this over Heineken, I guess, you know. And then I was looking at their website, the Schwinkel family. They had like 10 different products. I was like, wow, this is the same complaint I've been having for years. All of these Dutch and Belgian companies will send us one product, like their flagship. Heineken. Nice. What about the Tarvebach? Oh, well, uh, we're not sending that. Uh, Grolsch. Wonderful. What about the Canon? Crafted Canon. Powerful Canon. 11%. Yeah, we would buy it. We can't get it. And now Hollandia. There was a Hollandia Strong, seven and a half. You know we would buy it. But then I saw 12% Hollandia Super Strong, 12. Immediately we would buy it. Now, would we like it? I don't know. It'd probably have the same kind of like treacherous characteristics. You know, too strong, chalky mouthfeel. You know. But I was reading their ingredients list. It didn't seem like it was like garbage, you know. But so, um... Back to this. So this is a craft beer, you know. It's yeah, it's super strong. Uh, but it's not in a 500 milliliter can, you know. Um, it's a more of a gourmet product. It's a gourmet product it's made for what I'm doing, sipping it slowly, thinking about it, thinking on it as you drink on it, and uh, contemplating it and, and whatnot. It's not what those probably are made for. But you see, that back to the original point, is that the flavorings, all the spices, the pumpkin, the vanilla, the bourbon barrel, can help hide that stuff you get with the, um, the high gravity. But like with the Hollandia Super Strong, they got no flavoring in it, so it's probably going to come across as just like, <laughs> you know, un unbelievably strong and offensive. I can't really say that based on the fact that I've never had it. And they also make some other Super Strongs, 12. They probably, I was looking at the ingredients, they were very similar, weren't, weren't identical, but it's the same type of thing. But um, certainly we try, we're game, we're game, we're game. Mouthfeel, it's heavy, yes, 
which is nice because we, we were complaining about so many thin bodied stouts lately. Like we were saying thin fitty. But the 2021 seemed to get back back to where it needed to be. Like the song Find Your Way Back. Sweetness scale, yeah, it's pretty sweet. I mean, if you guzzled this, it's coming back up. I mean, if you're a fool for the city. Um, four out of five sugar cubes. Bitterness, now, remarkably low. I don't know the IBU, because like I said, they don't have a website listening for this that I, I checked. I was careful to check. Bitterness. I don't really see how anyone could drink this and say, oh, it's so bitter. It isn't bitter at all. Maybe one out of five hop cones. So if hoppiness is your game, don't come to this ballpark. Uh, vegetableness, it's there. Um, I don't know how you feel about drinking a beer that tastes like vegetable, meaning pumpkin in this case, but you know, you just get that vegetative thing. Doesn't bother me. Um, finish. Guess it's, uh, it's, it is, no, you see, I've said this before. Beers can be sweet in the taste, but they'd be dry in the finish. And you say, no, not possible. It's going to either be a sweet beer or a dry beer. It's not going to be both. Well, okay, you say so, but um, I've had innumerable beers that are sweet to the taste and dry to the finish, meaning not sweet crisp in some ways. Now this is would not be a crisp beer. If I want to drink a crisp beer, I'll go buy a 30 pack of Bush Light. I might do that. Um, is it wonderful? It is wonderful. The price is an outrage. You could say it's highway robbery, but um, I was not forced to buy this. There was no mandate that I buy this. You know, no one said, if you don't buy this, going to lose your job. It just was on the shelf and I had a choice. And I like that in America. Remember back in the old days in America you had freedom of choice. You could do what you wanted. But uh, but in this hammer and sickle culture in which we live that's not the case anymore. But anyway that being said uh, there's still a little there's still a little droplets of freedom here and there, much like in East Germany in 1985, you know, there's factions underground who dare to step out and declare. Um, I like this a lot. If you're looking to get transported to another time, another place, and be confused this would be a good product to try um, <sighs> where do I go who do I turn to um we're, okay well where, 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 where this oh a beer review yes <laughs> it's kind of just trying to figure out all right uh, anyway um it's it's overtly vegetative though so um, I don't know what your yammy squashy, pumpkin-y type preferences are, but uh, if you're a, if you're a, like opposed to that kind of thing, uh, yeah, just avoid this. And if you're opposed to 749, a 12 ounce bottle, yeah, uh, 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 avoid this. But um, if you're adventurous and you like exotic flavors, strange knockout products, hmm, yeah, what the heck. So, um, Give it a, I would give it a, something's telling me 96, 9.6 out of 10, which is an A, a most excellent product, uh, gets an F for price, but uh, like James Bond said, you only live twice, so laissez les bon temps relay, this is a dynamite product from a dynamite state in a, well, tolerable city, and we're going to end this review by saying, y'all, 
go to Houston, Texas and tour the St. Arnold Brewery.